ladies and gentlemen, Scott Francisco. Hello, it's great to be here. What a great setup. Um, Richard Sennett and Jeanette Sadekhan, your books uh, are required reading at Pilot Projects, so uh, it was amazing to hear from both of you today, and everyone's been incredible, inspirational. So Pilot Projects uh, Design Collective is based in the Lower East Side, and our work uh, focuses on the interface of culture and infrastructure. So I, I know we're in uh, good company here. Um, and we work at a variety of scales. We recently redes redesigned or designed a dinner for 200 artists where uh, food arrived on 12-foot troughs to exaggerate conversation and create some drama for them. We've, uh, we've been working with the Lower East Side bid um, to design pedestrian plazas, so thank you, DOT. Uh, that's a community project. And we're working on a rescue system for abandoned bicycles in that neighborhood as well. Um, <clears throat> So uh, we also do interactive workplace design. Um, this is uh, us co-designing the headquarters of Charity Water in, in Soho, um, where we worked with them to help add 30 new staff to an existing space and create uh, custom furniture pieces to uh, allow that to happen. So our heart, heart really lies in projects that are small and surprising, um, that are interventions that lead to much bigger changes uh, and transformations in the city. Um, so I want to share two pilot projects today that characterize our vision uh, for innovation and leadership in the culture and infrastructure of New York City. The first proposal uh, begins by stepping out onto what we believe is one of the most um, incredible public spaces uh, in the world, and that's the Brooklyn Bridge Promenade Boardwalk. Uh, the promenade uh, was not an afterthought by the Roeblings. It was keystone to the whole idea of the bridge. Um, yes, it was a place for practical pedestrian transportation, but it was also always thought of as a place to, to dream and to fly above the city and experience the space. This is really uh, the first high line in New York City. Um, <clears throat> so it's no accident that this boardwalk is, is made of wood. Um, the bridge is really a composition of three materials. Stone um, for a sense of the earth and the compressive strength. Steel uh, for gracefulness and tensile strength, and wood uh, for the one place that the pedestrian touches this incredible structure. Um, as part of its natural aging cycle, this wood is going to have to be replaced soon. And uh, the question is, what should it be replaced with? We know today that, without any doubt, wood is the most sustainable building material if properly harvested, um, and that's by a wide margin. Uh, it sequesters carbon. Uh, it it uh, releases oxygen and it creates animal habitat all at the same time. Um, the wood on the boardwalk, however, comes from tropical rainforests. And this raises a lot of questions. We have to ask what this means. Uh, New York City's been using tropical hardwood and its infrastructure for, for centuries, actually, and with really little thought to, to the impact. Um, most of us here know that we're in the midst of a tropical forest uh, deforestation crisis. And the reasons for this are complex. It's a tangle of social, political, economic issues. Um, and I propose that it's time for New York City to make uh, an intentional connection between how we build and preserve in New York and the state of our biosphere, and that this can be done in a way that explicitly benefits these priceless forests and not, not ignores them. Um, again, issues for deforestation, very complex. Often it's agricultural based for economic reasons. So our vision is to sponsor the world's most visible tropical forest conservation project to supply the wood um, in partnership with New York City and people around the globe who love the bridge and care about the environment. The Brooklyn Bridge Forest uh, plan is to enable individual people uh, to sponsor each of 11,000 new boards um, and creatively reuse all of the wood that is removed from the bridge. New York will get a free boardwalk, and the, sponsors, uh, and the sponsored rainforest will get the resources for long-term protection and oversight and research uh, that they need. And this process can be repeated every 30 years. We want to use the iconic stature of the bridge uh, and New York's uh, stature as a big six global consumer to effectively force movement uh, towards transparent global environmental stewardship. 
in our extensive research with our partners, Wildlife Conservation Society, um, MAS, and Natural Areas Conservancy, we've traveled to places um, far and wide where forest communities are looking for alternatives to clear-cutting uh, cash crops, oil exploration, and, and worse in some cases. Uh, those are the options that many of these uh, rainforest communities face. Um, and we saw this very recently, if you're following the news in Ecuador, um, where the government allowed oil drilling in a national park when uh, international funding for rainforest protection didn't show up. Um, and that's our answer to why not buy local. Um, not, that, not simply that the local wood is not as durable and, and reliable, but uh, local wood just really is not going to help the rainforest or the communities who live in them who are looking for ways to actually confront these conservation challenges. Um, so we're partnering with a carefully selected community in Guatemala right now um, in the early stage of this concept in the Mayo Biosphere Reserve. Uh, it's a huge area of forest that's full of Mayan temples, countless a uh, animals and plants, and migratory birds uh, that winter there. And we want to help this community uh, protect 200,000 acres of forest and demonstrate what's possible when people work together around the world uh, in trust and accountability. Uh, the committed people of this forest will harvest local wood under the most exacting conservation plan, which is in place already, and going beyond the strictest international standards like FSC, for those of you that are familiar with that. Uh, the funding will come from the sponsors of each of the 11,000 planks, and the cycle can be repeated um, every, every 30 years or so as, the, as new wood is required. So this specific forest, the Brooklyn Bridge Forest, will also be a place for education uh, and research exchange, ecotourism, social entrepreneurship, uh, helping people thrive in partnership with this natural legacy, and, and actually testing a new model that can be refined and repeated and replicated at scale. So if you'd like to know more about this project, please visit brooklynbridgeforest.com. Um, one slide behind here. And, uh, and talk to us. We'd love to talk to you about it. Uh, we believe that this can be a, a symbol of, of New York City's dual commitment to the historic structures um, and uh, the global environment. So I'm going to come back down to the streets of New York for a minute uh, to talk about another project um, and another legacy, our tap water in New York. Most of us know that our city's drinking water comes from um, an infrastructure that's unparalleled in ambition and execution. Over a billion gallons of water a day are delivered to New York City from protected watersheds and gravity-powered aqueducts. The water is so good that generations of, of bakers and brewers have set up shop in New York City because of it, and New York bagels, a uh, great icon of our city. But if you ask the average New Yorker about drinking fountains, you get a very different response. And we've been doing that, this for the last few years. Um, the majority of us avoid or even despise public drinking fountains. And, and perhaps not surprisingly for New Yorkers, we also complain that they're too few and far between. Um, so this shortage and avoidance of drinking fountains is the cause of and is caused by this ridiculous addiction we have to single-use plastic water bottles. Uh, New Yorkers use over a billion per year. And that creates enough plastic waste to wrap six times around the Earth, if you can believe that. Um, we then pay around $8 million a year uh, to dispose of, to, for the privilege of driving this garbage to Ohio and Pennsylvania and South Carolina and burying it in a hole in the ground. Um, so this is a travesty that just has to be reversed. Uh, we all know it. And Pilot Projects wants to change the hearts and minds when it comes to drinking water in the city. So we want to go from this to this. Um, we want our public drinking fountains to become cultural icons that parallel our city's great water infrastructure. And we want to be reminded of this every time we drink. And this will be a process that will take time, money, and New York-style determination. And so we want to launch with a big splash. The 100 Fountains proposal is an international art and design competition for 100 innovative drinking fountains to be installed on the streets of New York City. Similar to the pianos, the gates, the falls, or even the cow parade, this would be a public art project uh, and placemaking event of the highest caliber. It would involve world-renowned designers as well as new talent. Um, from thousands of submissions, we would choose the, the best 100 in creativity, technical excellence, and innovation, um, ex beauty, sustainability, and, and these prototypes would be fabricated in New York City and, and state manufacturing uh, facilities. So once installed for a six-month exhibition, um, New Yorkers and tourists can, can drink up, uh, get involved, and vote on their favorites. 
and we envision this as the world's biggest conversation on drinking fountains, perhaps since the Roman aqueducts. Um, the, the project could be privately funded, uh, obviously with this kind of exposure, and, uh, or publicly funded, or some combination. Um, we're looking at some different models, and, but leaving the city ultimately with a, a legacy of um, upgraded infrastructure in this, uh, in this place. So um, I'm out of time. So both of these projects are just examples of how we're looking at a simultaneous um, support of creativity and change and sustainability and, and stability in our infrastructure. So thank you very much.